Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and to the Chinese campaign where I made a bit of a boo-boo and I recorded the entire thing uh, with my microphone off. <laughs> so this is post-recording uh, commentary. Uh, so first up, we have the Chaoyong versus the Slava Rossi um, class cruiser, which is also just called the Slava Rossi. Um, these are pretty fast cruisers, 37 knots. Um, it seems like a pretty even even fight. Um, I'm kind of guessing that they don't have too much in the way of armor. They're not that expensive. So, yeah, they also carry a lot of torpedoes. Um, two quads, four triples, and a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, it's a, a kind of evening battle, as I seem to recall. And, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, nothing too bad. Um, it's this. That's not right. Sorry about that. Uh, the uh, playback viewer had uh, paused. Uh, it's fine. Um, because I'm trying to watch watch this back and record that video, uh, video audio on top. Um, so, they're coming straight at us. I did think it might have been a ghost battle. But clearly not. Um... Yeah, it's going to be... I reckon this is going to be a tough fight. Like on paper, these ships are pretty pretty similar. Um, the other thing I've noticed in 1.3 is there's this... Oh, yeah, I've got a target lock. <laughs> yeah. So, target lock uh, is really annoying. It happens when you have the ladder aiming progress goes negative. And that causes all sorts of problems. It shouldn't happen. It does happen. Uh, and you can fix it uh, if there's more than one enemy ship. Okay. Uh, by I tried to do it when it was paused, but it didn't work. But if it's playing, if you target another ship, um, and then retarget the same ship again, it'll go away. So I'm kind of thinking that the angle indicator might fix it, but it doesn't. Still on minus 20, which should not be happening. Uh, and then I'm trying to do it pause, but it doesn't work. But if you're running the sim, and I was trying to do it right before I fired, yeah, and it doesn't, didn't do it, which was confusing me. But it was because I was still paused. There we go. <laughs> so change that over. And there you go. Aimed. Really annoying that that is still a problem in, in Dreadnoughts. I, I don't know why bugs keep reappearing. Like old bugs come back. Uh, I think I think it might be version control for the developers. They might just have poor version control, and it's quite difficult for them to uh, like successfully. <laughs> like I've I've spoken to the devs directly about the target log bug, and they fixed it. Like they did, they they did. They went in. They they were like, oh okay, we know what we're talking about, and they fixed it. And then a few versions later, the fix gets undone. Um, and I'm convinced that Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts has a serious problem with overflows. Uh, I think the problem with submarines is caused by overflows. The problems in the penetration system are caused by overflows. Um, the target log bugs almost certainly caused by an overflow. And uh, if you don't know what I mean by an overflow, basically, 
this torpedo to avoid. Uh, <laughs> the numbers get screwy if they go too big or too small or whatever. And I'm sure, and a cheeky little ram there, um, I'm sure that, again, I've been reading up on it, I think Dreadnoughts uses exact numbers. So it will store the exa an exact number. And I think when a formula gives an output that is beyond the range that the game can handle, it causes problems. And <laughs> I, I think, yeah, the problem is that they're using exact numbers you can see it in in their GDP figures because they go down to the last dollar oh yeah this is where I decided the game hated me so hard to hit each other these uh, ships and then they get <coughs> a series of lucky hits and take take my flooding like get a flooding hit a serious flooding hit two of them and I flood out so yeah, I I call call the fight and uh, and on well it, it will count as defeat, but effectively a draw. Uh, yeah, evening minus thirty six. I just think the the weather debuffs are and the time of day debuffs are something else. Like they're so extreme um, in terms of what they're doing. That I don't know. I think they maybe need to think about adjusting those values a little bit. Um, I'm still having a lot of fun with 1.3, though. It, it has been a lot of fun. Uh, if I don't sound as enthusiastic, that is because I am having to re-record the damn episodes <laughs> and talk through all this stuff again. Yeah, just stupid of me forgetting to turn my microphone on such a basic basic thing to, to bloody check and it's only because I was streaming last last night and I don't normally stream in the evenings and yet I uh, had my microphone off and I didn't check it stupid so at least uh, this is the uh, cut down so well slightly cut down version and yeah we're just going to sail away and hopefully get away yeah I'm pretty sure I got away from this fight I can't actually remember uh, I only recorded this like an hour ago <laughs> memory is terrible But yeah, I was feeling a bit aggrieved with this battle. I think I got unlucky. I was also considering that the design of the heavy cruiser, maybe the design of the heavy cruiser wasn't wasn't great, but I I've, I've seen it in later battles, so I know it's it's not that that is the problem. Right, and then we have a battle with the Krasnodar. Now this is a very expensive ship, two hundred and eighty-two million. Uh, with 10 13 inch guns it can do 31 knots interesting very much I think uh, a counter to our cruiser killer battle cruiser is very similar design philosophy um, not a fast ship with 12 ish inch guns um, and compared to ours it's actually faster and has bigger guns so you know Russians must be thinking oh yes unfortunately <laughs> they're going up against one of our true battle cruisers not a cruiser killer uh, it's quite a nice ship though uh, in, in turret is a bit of a 
bit of a weird one. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty solid ship. Just encountering the wrong kind of enemy because our true battle cruiser is <laughs> faster and has bigger guns and has more armor. None of which are a great combination. <laughs> Plus we have some escorts. But I think the range that we open up at is pretty much the same. <laughs> I do love those light cruisers. Uh, ABC XYZ is definitely a spicy thing to pull off on uh, on your cruisers. I um, also think those destroyers look really cool. Uh, not that it looks uh, that important in a battle, but, you know, why not? Still not in range? Jeez. Yeah, uh, as well, I, with all the new accuracy DBS, like, I'm playing 1930, and I'm noticing accuracy is sometimes super bad because of the fast target and maneuver bonuses on top of, you know, it's dark, or not even it's dark, it's like, it was like cloudy, minus 20% accuracy. Oof. Um, I just think the the weather debuffs are too big. Like for instance, overcast is like minus twenty two and a half. Um, if that's the same as base accuracy, like twenty points of base accuracy, twenty twenty is a high end uh, tower, like main tower or secondary tower. That that is a that is a lot of base accuracy to be just taking away. Um, that that's a very harsh penalty, twenty percent. And you know the waves, like even if they're smooth waves, it's like minus twelve. And then, oh, they're going at thirty nine knots, so you get a minus 93% chance to hit. Okay, and then... Um, <laughs> the, the AI is jiggling the ship around. So that's a target manoeuvre, which is another minus 90%. And it gets to the point where you can't hit anything. And this is in 1930. Any of you guys playing this in uh, 1890? Apparently that is the most popular start date. I have no idea why if you're starting in 1890 you uh, my hat is off to you because it must be like pulling teeth <laughs> I'm sorry it's just, it's just so painful playing in that era um, yeah are you, are you finding that you're able to hit anything ever at all uh, in the mid to late game are you also finding that uh, light cruisers especially are going at ludicrous speeds because both uh, Russia and Japan, a bit of foreshadowing, have um, gone for really fast builds, like stupidly fast. Is that the new meta? Just speed is armor? and go for ultra fast designs anyway we're now close enough that we can actually start exchanging hits uh, nothing big in the way of hits it's mostly partial pins I also said uh, this battle that I start to suspect there was a problem in the pen system again that just reappeared but um, perhaps not there's an easy way for me to test that actually now I think about it. 
but no, I think I noticed that where I was using HE shells, that's what it was. It's like, oh, why are you using HE? Load the AP shells. damage. Not a lot though. The uh, Kresnala was a surprisingly resilient ship. And that resilience translated to damage to me. Because like we, we've hurt them. We got them down to 65% structure. But getting a killing blow... Oh, they just took out a main gun. That's a pretty good shot actually. Um, getting a killing blow is quite hard. And they're closing. And they're just hitting us just enough. Well, then they're now super low on ammunition. Must have uh, damaged a magazine. Didn't notice that the first time around. Um, hitting their torpedoes. They've still got three torpedoes left, but it's a side launcher. Uh, Marshals again. Marshals and overpins on me. But this is a very close range fight. Very dangerous. Again, nothing from that. And I was starting to get a little suspicious. <laughs> there was something going on with penetration. It's, just, it's only occasionally. Um, it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Uh, and I am using the balance mod, so that could have something to do with it as well. But I, to me, it feels like there's uh, potentially some uh, some gremlins in the system that have reappeared. Ah, uh, yes, the battlecruiser decides it's damaged. See, look at the amount of flooding that's taken. Hey, I just. <laughs> The game just really hates you sometimes. It's like, nope, you're gonna 53% flooding, even though there's only four compartments and they're not fully flooded. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six unflooded. And then we take a pretty big hit to the funnel. Alright, I think I'm yeah, I'm starting to question why the 14s aren't doing anything. Yeah, it's giving me partial pen. There, yeah, I was suspicious in this battle. Partial pens on the aft belt, five kilometers broadside to broadside, and not maneuvering at all. And look at that, 54.7 inch effective pen. I think that came out at like 22 inch on the actual battle cruiser itself, using its armor quality. Like, I know it's a maximum, but that's a more than double the pen at max. And we're pretty close to ideal conditions hitting flat on. So, yeah, there's definitely a gremlin there, because that ship should have been ripped to shreds. No way should be getting partials. Um, that consistently like it's not a if this then that system it's it's you know there's a lot of moving parts and um, there's you know chances in here as well but yeah to get a partial pin again seven inches of armor when you should be able to go through 22 max at that range and, and all the rest of it that seems off <laughs> definitely seems off so I decided to close in with a destroyer to go and uh, torpedo it but uh, it turns out not to be necessary Crescent uh, succumbs to flooding and our battle cruiser makes it out good work all round and uh, I don't really have a huge number of complaints
Hmm. I must have been talking about something on this screen. I'm not even sure what. Probably complaining about the pen system. <laughs> Uh, a communist win, a uh, an election, which is uh, interesting. Uh, obviously, Russia is asking for a peace treaty. Um, as uh, well, it makes sense for them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, the thing with uh, the communists is basically the way the system works in dreadnoughts with politics is if you have unrest and there's an election the party will change even if the governing party is still actually quite popular so i had the left wing and it's now gone to communist and communists get a, a unrest modifier but as well the unrest sets to zero when you have an election and the party changes and then you're stuck with them for the rest of the rest of the campaign basically if you start off with unrest your party will your governing party will change and <laughs> yeah your governing party will change i don't know how else to put it um and then whatever you get next will be the party you have so for instance in the spanish campaign i started off with uh was it the centrists might have been the centrists and i had high unrest and despite all my efforts to reduce the unrest there was an election unrest goes to zero because change in uh party no uh, the nationalists got in and so yeah just nationalists in charge for the entire game and that's not great and then i'm also talking as well about uh, the communists give you a, a really harsh gdp modifier uh, but they give you a province income boost modifier. So this is supposed to represent the fact that in a communist system, or at least in theory, um, the you know central GDP is not going to be as good, but you're going to have more distributed development. And the same is true of the left-wing government. And if you look at the right-wing uh, parties, you have more GDP, but you have less... Uh, provincial improvement and so you know it's, it's a trade-off but unfortunately um, the way the game currently works is the provinces give you so little income compared to your black box GDP machine um, that you just have <laughs> uh, you're, you're almost always best off having either the centrists or the right wing parties in charge i think it is um because they give you gdp boosts which is just massive so if you can keep your country at peace and if you can keep um the right or the centrist parties in charge uh yeah you're gonna be uh quids in but uh no the social democratic china is now communist china again <laughs> nothing i can nothing i can do about it uh but i decided to order another hunan class a uh, quick look at the uh finances and things and i think i'm going to go on to the next turn yes i am Right, here we go. <laughs> Japan has declared war on us. So, yeah, next episode is going to be focused on Japan. Nothing to do this episode with Japan. But the Sevastopol, one of the pretty terrible uh, Russian battleships, has, well decided to make an issue of things so we are going to deploy our ships to respond uh, mess up the division because it does weird things it doesn't do what you expect there we go now 
if I remember this quite rightly. Yeah. I'm the the problem we're gonna have is actually engaging the enemy properly. Oh, a little bit of a kiss. Lovely. Because <laughs> um, our battleship is slow. That's the problem. So it's going to be a long, long slog <laughs> to get into range. And I don't want to send the light ships up without, uh, without backup. Uh, right, how are we doing? Sorry, I had to pause, pause my uh, um, playback <laughs> recording. Yeah, I love these ships. I have to be honest, they're, they're a bit weird. Um, at, but ABCX, <laughs> triple 14s, is, uh, is pretty cool. And the secondary arrangement is just fantastic. Uh, I absolutely love it. <laughs> uh, they're just slow. And there's not much we can do about that. You can only push, push a hull so much before you're just running into it. The limits of physics. Sorry, I had hiccups. Uh, yeah. So, plan. <laughs> <It's> charge. <laughs> yeah, they're a really fun battleship. Just forward in, which complements the fact that they're slow, because they can just keep coming at you. Um, oh yeah, this is where they they start targeting the the escorts. So, uh, just as soon as they get a hit, I, I'm rotating them out. And what ends up happening is they focus their fire on the the retreating ship for a little bit so really our battleship can continue to advance them without receiving too much in the way of fire and the was it 11.1 inch gun yeah 11.1 inch guns they're using yeah then they they pack a fair old punch uh to a destroyer or, or a cruiser but it's not enough to kill them in one hit and it's not even enough to kill them in two hits uh, but it's enough that you kind of notice that there's a problem and get them get them withdrawing and then the AI will continue to fire at them. Um, I think the AI is prioritizing the destroyers because and one of the light cruisers because they have torpedoes and it thinks that the torpedoes are a big threat to it, which they probably are to be fair. Um, but <laughs> Or maybe it just thinks it can't do much to the battleship. So it might as well shoot up the light cruisers. It could be that too. But it, regardless of the reason, um, it just lets me advance on them consistently with the battleship. And they're so concerned with the smaller ships, uh, which, you know, are moving up, looking like they're going to torpedo him uh, or her. I should say, looking like they're going to torpedo them. Uh, oh, then they get a hit. They get a flooding hit. Just, <laughs> yeah, all the phenomenal adrenals just not like me today. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're so concerned with the potential for a torpedo strike that they just let the damage build and build and build. Uh, they're headed directly away which means the battleship's firing HE. Um, and I seem to remember, I, I, I was so obsessed with trying to get 
you know, like managing my small ships, rotating them out, um, getting them on, or trying to maybe get them into a torpedo firing position, and so on and so on, that I, I completely missed how much damage those HE shells are doing cumulatively. Um, you know, it's the odd overpin. Uh, but, like, the, that's up to 13,000 damage from partial pens. <laughs> like, the 14 inch um, shells are actually hurting it. Um, I think most of its superstructure is pretty ruined by this point. But I'm just so busy, uh, yeah, fiddling with all my ships and, and getting them. Yeah, I'm just not paying attention to uh, just how beaten up the enemy battleship is is getting. Just trying to get these destroyers in position. Thinking, ah, uh, okay, maybe I can get into a torpedo strike position. Another flooding hit. But look at that, they're already down to 11% structure, and I don't notice because uh, it's hidden by uh, damage status. I was just looking at the flooding, thinking, oh wow, they've got a lot of flooding. Getting torpedoes off, uh, they turn, uh, I've got a second ship, which launches, and I think, oh yeah, I've got them, and then they sink anyway. <laughs> mm. Fine, cool with me. I do actually enjoy the fact that I did hit them with torpedoes. But there we go. Outstanding job by the Chinese fleet uh, to take down a supremely expensive battleship. These are half a billion each. Thanks to the fact they have a turbo electric drive that they're trying to push to, well, way, way beyond its limits. Um, <laughs> yeah, just really, uh, really, really... Interesting. And I noticed Japan actually has a small fleet. One battleship, two battle cruisers. Is it eight heavy cruisers? Yeah. Two light cruisers and a couple of destroyers. Um, and I also noticed here that it does actually tell you the minimum needed tonnage on this screen. It didn't used to, but it does now. Really nice change. I complained about it in a previous video. I was totally wrong too. It is there. Um, clear as day. I just didn't see it. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to try and invade Formosa, a.k.a. Taiwan. Um, and I'm going to send every ship I can to do it. Um, but you see that Japanese fleet there? I think I'll spot it in a moment. Yeah, there we go. Um, that is their entire fleet. Literally every ship they have. And I, I double check. Um, and our in entire fleet is going to be sailing past it so the next episode is going to be it's going to be quite the thing and um again a bit of foreshadowing uh, not spoilers but uh, anticipation it's really good anyway <laughs> thanks for watching i got past the end of the video uh thank you very so much for watching and uh, i'll see you again soon for some more ultimate Bye for now.